Welcome to Sarder TV. I'm Stephanie Haney. Today I'm talking with Franz Johansson, founder and CEO of the Medici Group, an innovative strategy firm that activates the diversity of an organization into its innovative edge. Franz has worked with 30% of the Fortune 100, ranging industries and sectors, with clients like the Walt Disney Company, Spotify, Pfizer, the United Nations, and even the country of Trinidad and Tobago. He's an internationally recognized speaker, keynoting to audiences all over the world, and he's written books with titles translated into 20 languages. Just last year, he was recognized by the New York Hall of Science for their Creative Entrepreneurship Award, and now he's the newest member of their Board of Trustees. Franz, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Nice Eye's mission is to nurture future generations of passionate learners, critical thinkers, and active citizens. So what is it about that mission that resonates with you? I think that the idea of learning is critical today. Uh, the world is changing so fast, so whatever you thought you knew about how things work, you're going to have to shift, you're going to have to change it. And the sooner one can sort of get into that mindset of learning, of constant learning, the sort of the better off you are. And Nice Eye is focusing on people at the very early stages of their lives, of kids, and how they think about knowledge, how they think about their skill sets, how they think about what they are passionate about is a constant evolution. It's going to be more so throughout their entire lives. So that is the big change that we're facing today. NYSA is making that a big part of their mission. Share with us a little bit about your background. What is it that inspired you to write The Medici Effect? Well, uh, my background is quite diverse. Um, I grew up kind of different from most of the people around me. My, my mother's uh, American, she's black and Cherokee, my dad is Swedish, and I grew up in Sweden. So during my life, um, I got to see the power of that diversity that, that my parents sort of just had as a natural part of their, of their relationship. And once I came to college, once I started studying uh, there, I, I, I came to realize what would happen when you bring together uh, knowledge and perspectives from lots of different disciplines. I, I was able to bring together disciplines of physics and chemistry and, and, and biology and, and economics when I was studying environmental science and particularly on marine biology. And that gave me the notion that the same ideas that sort of happen when you bring different cultures together, the same process occurs when you bring together different disciplines. And so the Medici effect was really an exploration of these intersections. What happens when you combine ideas from one culture with another? What happens when you combine ideas from one field with another? And at the heart of it, it says that the fundamental driving force for innovation comes from these intersections, comes from, from these combinations. And that essentially means that diversity drives innovation. That became the core message of the book and has since been the core message of my career. Can you think of an example of how a STEM mindset might be useful in a pursuit that's not typically considered a scientific innovation? You know, I think this is one of the, the big ideas around STEM, and it's not talked about enough. Uh, the, the instinct is that the reason we have to focus on STEM is because we need more scientists, and we need more engineers, and so on. And, and I mean, part of that is true, uh, but that was not how it played out for me. I mean, I was, when I grew up, the, the focus of how I thought about my education was around science. When I went to college, I started with studying quantum mechanics, and then that eventually became environmental science. But that, in turn, led me to start a company around healthcare. I went to business school. Uh, I started a software company. I became an author. Um, the scientific mindset, essentially, that comes from studying STEM can be applied in all kinds of different areas that is not directly related to science. And what it really, the reason why is because it gives you another perspective. It gives you a way of, of saying, if I'm curious about a topic, how should I go about pursuing that topic? How should I go about investigating that topic? And that curiosity, that, that uh, nurturing of curiosity is something that I think comes fairly naturally within, within STEM. But it also gives you a way of dealing with that curiosity, of, of pursuing it, of exploring it. So the biggest contribution I believe STEM has in how kids think and how anybody really thinks about their passions, about their careers, is that it applies across the board and not just within the sciences. 
Why do you think it's so important to have a place like NYSAI? So NYSAI provides a, several things. At its core, it is a physical place where kids can come and learn how to explore, learn how to experiment, how to design, how to play when it comes to ideas that has to do with creativity, that has to do ultimately with innovation, that has to do with pursuing their passions. And so the physical place I think is important. A lot of things happen virtually today, but being able to actually touch things with your hands, see things and interact with others is crucial. But it also does something else. NYSAI has taken a firm commitment to pursuing this within a diverse community, of bringing diversity into the fold and, and ensuring that everybody has access to this creativity. And that is at the heart of the work that I do. I've been able to show consistently that diversity drives innovation, diversity drives creativity. So any, any effort, I believe, that is, that is set up to pursue and help accelerate uh, those endeavors need to take diversity into account. And they've sort of made that a, a core part of their mission. So this is why NYSA is, is critical today. What would you say to someone who doesn't think they're innovative? The word innovation sometimes becomes so big that people look at it and go, well, this is something that is reserved for people that work at Apple or Google within uh, tech companies or, or, or scientists in R&D that work inside of companies. That is simply not true. Innovation really is about coming up with new novel ideas and making those ideas happen. Right over here, before I came to uh, do this interview, I was listening to uh, the Hamilton soundtrack, the Broadway musical. Mm -hmm. And first of all, my kids turned me on to that. Uh, so they've been listening to it all summer. Um, and, and the amount of innovation that's gone into the creation of that soundtrack is exceptional. And none of it really has to do with tech has to do with science, it has to do with bringing new novel combinations. And in this particular case, uh, for instance, how do, you, how do you combine the idea of a cabinet meeting with a rap battle? At the heart of the work that I've done around the Medici effect, it's been centered around the fact that innovation is when you combine one concept with another. And these two concepts are diverse, they're different. That applies in fashion, that applies in in food, that applies certainly in tech and science as well. And what's amazing about it is that this is something that virtually everybody can do. In fact, we do do it, but we don't think of ourselves as innovative when we do it. I sometimes say that uh, if you're driving to work or if you're taking the subway to work and you think of a different way of actually getting there, you smile to yourself and say, hmm, that was, that was, I hadn't thought about that before, but that's a, that's a new cool way of doing it. In a very small way, you're innovating. But we don't like to give ourselves credit for something like that. Mm. Everyone thinks of new ideas. We do it in everyday life. And it is time for us to take ownership of that and understand that the future is innovative. And so we yeah. have to understand when we are innovative and well, try to do it more. It was announced in March that you were elected to the Board of Trustees of NYSAI, along with our very own Russell Sarter. Congratulations. Thank you. So what has you most excited now about working with the Board of NYSAI? I am super excited about this because NYSAI's mission and the mission really that I've staked out in my life and with my company, The Medicine Group, is to make the world more innovative, more creative through the explicit use of diversity. And so this merging of, of missions. I, I've been looking for an organization to really find a way to partner with in this way. Uh, I, I don't know if I find one that is more closely aligned to those values than I say. So I'm extremely excited about this. I believe that I'm going to be able to, through, through the work of, of, of my company and, and, and the thought leadership, be able to help NYSAI get to the next level. And so that is what makes it exciting, being able to join an organization where one can have a real impact. Share with us your vision of what STEM education looks like in the next five years. Well, I can share with you how I think it should look. <laughs> and I think it should be driven towards a couple of things. One, uh, more experimental. Uh, it, it, the, the future is about innovating, it's about testing ideas. So that's one. Two, 
it should be curiosity and excitement driven. Um, I, I mentioned earlier that uh, my, my daughters, who are eight and nine, are all into Hamilton. But what this has led them to actually get into is, first of all, they're reading the biography of Hamilton. They're talking about how the United States was founded. They talk about the creation of the financial system. I mean, there's nothing that I, I couldn't possibly have imagined them being interested or excited about any of these things, but Hamilton made them excited. And I believe that STEM education needs to be centered around things that excite us, that gets us passionate about something so that we are willing to dig into the science or the technology. Uh, and then last, I believe that STEM should really be converted into STEAM. So, so when we say STEM, we kind of leave out the arch out of that, but, mm. but STEAM adds an A, which is the arch, and that's where I believe this thing is going. STEM is being converted into STEAM, it is more experimental, and it's going to be built around things that we're passionate about. Friends, we really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us here today at Sardar TV. Thank you for inviting me. This is great. This is Sardar TV. I'm Stephanie Haney.